the ground okay. level right here. This is Andy. We're talking about well digging. Let's do it. All right. Ground level's right here. This is we're starting with. This is a well casing stuck down in the ground. Uh-huh. Uh, so far, so good. We're, we're on the basics, and it really isn't a lot to it. Just in the ground, we've got somewhere there's going to be a static water level, where above that, it's basically dry, and below it, it's going to be a saturated saturated material. Um, Is that pretty consistent, or that varies like crazy from year to year? That can vary from year to year, and it can vary from here to 100 feet over there. And it can, you, the amount of things that can go on in the ground, you can also drill two wells next to each other and end up with two different static water levels, depending on if you got some confining layers or, or not confining layers. But for a given point in time, for a same point, what's the variation? It can, there's no normal. There's no normal at all. Mm -hmm. we've, we've shot several thousand holes and everyone's different. <laughs> Since most water around here, what we drill in isn't in a isn't in a specific aquifer. It's all perched water. It's it's per se generally the water right here isn't hydraulically connected to the water a mile away. It's all kind of localized. The water you get here is <laughs> is rainwater that's recharged at fairly close to this area. Mm -hmm. um, you go uh, west over into Nebraska far enough, you get to the Ogallala Aquifer. Um, that's all sand that's all hydraulically connected to its, hmm. itself and you can get recharge from hundreds of miles away affects everything but around here that's not really how it works hmm. um, so you have the well stuck in here and you've got your unsaturated and your saturated below in an ideal world what we want to hit when we drill we want to hit a sand or a gravel something that water can flow through. Mm -hmm. And what that means is you've got a pump in the hole. And you're not considering bedrock in this scheme here? Right you? now, we aren't. I'll get, mm -hmm. I'll ultimately get into that. In this scheme, yeah, we don't have bedrock involved. Um, sand or something that water flows through, and it'll move through that, that sand or gravel, something with voids in it, and it'll fill up this well as fast as you pump it out. Mm -hmm. um, the well itself really doesn't have storage in it, and as, it's, as it sits there and it's not doing anything, the water in the well's up here, um, you start up the pump. It is gonna draw down a little bit, um, just to make up for whatever friction you got in all the material. And the water around it, you end up with what they call a Zacona depression. Mm -hmm. and it kinda looks like this. Yes, what do you learn that. this, by the way? Is this like from practice, or most of it's practice? There are books on it, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of it you make up. In fact, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I could never track down any concrete answers on well digging. Like, and the internet is the worst resource for because it changes so much. From what you do here to what you do 100 miles away yeah. changes, and then what one person says works doesn't yeah. work here or there, or they, they well, mm. they think this is the only way it can be done. The ultimate goal is to get water out of something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any way you do it yeah. is good. Mm -hmm. um, mm. But, all right, ideally we have the sand or gravel, mm -hmm. but some places, you know, you don't find sand or gravel. Mm -hmm. All you get is silt, clay, something confining um, to where you don't have very fast recharge. Um, the way, yeah. what we've got to get water out of around here is glacial till, we might call it glacial drift. It's whatever the glaciers left when they came through. Um, and you look out over some rivers and you'll see like a sandbar here, but then there's not a sandbar next to it. That's the same thing that happened underground. If, if we're looking above, you get you get just trails of kind of sand to where, where these glaciers left it. Um, if you drill and you miss one of these trails of sand, we consider that a dry hole. If you drill and hit one of those trails of sand, a, a sandbar through there, You've got, mm -hmm. got water. And this is when someone says a vein of water or an underground river, mm. this is what's going on. There isn't oh, per okay. se, at least in this area, just voids in the mm. ground um, that water's flowing through like, like a river or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
and then around here you don't drill into bedrock looking for water. It's in a nutshell, it's mineralized water. It's a salt water. It's it's too high a TDS to be useful for for ag use or for domestic use. Um, you go far enough south in Missouri, about where the Missouri River crosses Missouri, you can drill into bedrock and you can get decent water out of it. Um, bedrock around here, and when I say bedrock, it's going to be shale or limestone. Um, and sometimes I might say overburden or glacial till, that's everything above bedrock to the surface. Um, the bedrock around here, it isn't normally fractured, first of all, and then it's just worthless water. When you so fractured you means it, that's just geological formation where it's just got cracks? Just got a bunch cracks of cracks. In it, right. Mm -hmm. And bedrock it isn't fractured. There just isn't it's just rock. You can't get can't get water out of it. Mm -hmm. um, so back to basically around here you gotta find for a high yield well you gotta find sand or gravel in mm -hmm. one of these strips to get a high producing well. Mm. Now What's done a lot of times, if you if you shoot test holes and you never find what you're looking for, good sand or gravel, mm -hmm. um, you show up and you end up just drilling a big hole in the ground, and you set set a bigger casing inside of that anyway, and you put a gravel pack around it. Um, and so then is that is this first one is that a casing? Big that's casing. High, that's just borehole. Borehole. Bore hole. That's casing. Okay. Um, we'll and put borehole and casing on it. Okay. Um, and whatever. I don't know. It's a 24-inch casing stuck down in it. And when it's sitting there, not being used, it's going to fill up. Even though all you hit is silt, sand, clay, stuff that water doesn't flow through very fast, it'll seep in really slowly. It's going to seep into this. Mm -hmm. this well and it's going to fill up to this point mm -hmm. so then you've just got however much storage 500 gallon storage whatever the, ma the math works out you can you can figure out what you got sitting there so then you got this buffer here to work with and on a normal house um, the people can get up in the morning and as we say they can shit shower or shave and use use all this water at once it draws it draws the water down a little bit and then they leave, they go off to work, um, and then it, throughout the day it recharges back up. Um, a gallon a minute is 1,440 gallons a day. That's mm -hmm. a decent amount of water. But yeah. if you drill a gallon per minute well over on one of these small ones, we consider that a dry hole. Mm -hmm. Because you just want to use, well, a normal shower head's two and a half gallons a minute, then you got someone wanting to run a load of laundry and all this stuff at once. You, know, you just suck this thing dry, and you just you don't have any buffer there, any storage there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what happens with a large diameter. You just have buffer. Of course, you can't. You got lawn sprinklers, or you take a garden hose, you hook up to your your faucet, and leave a hose mm -hmm. run. Leave it on long enough, it sucks. It sucks as well dry. Yeah. Um, you got to shut it off, and it will recover. But it might be a week for the thing to recover back up. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see, I guess that's so the basics of geology. When we get into well drilling and what the mechanics of that, do you want to do that now or do you want to... Yeah, let's <laughs> talk about it. Now here, would this one, the, the big diameter well, work anywhere in the world? Or? If, if there's not um, limestone outcropping or bedrock outcropping right at the surface, basically you can't drill a hole that big into limestone really easily or even difficultly you, it's really hard to get that size of hole um, where a small diameter you can go into bedrock um, you do need to have a, a static water level shallow enough for these to work too which if you've got got a ravine or a ditch somewhere you can go next to them and a lot of times you can get get something like this or as you did the kind of the tile line stuff in the ground over there um, I said there's no right or wrong way. It's just whatever you do to get water's what you do. On on mm -hmm. brand new houses, we've we've shot holes before. Um, you end up not finding formations, and ultimately you you set up pumping out of a pond. Mm -hmm. um, okay, but tell me about this. Like, if where's the water coming in from? Is the screen only on the bottom, or where? It it depends on.